This is the Audi A1. It's quite similar to the Volkswagen Polo and the Seat Ibiza, of which I also ran for a few months. But that Audi badge is important. That makes it fancier, premium, maybe even a little bit luxury, and also a little bit more expensive. I spent six months living with the Audi A1 to see if it's worth the extra cash over its rivals. Mine is a sport model and it's got a one litre three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine with 116 horsepower. With nothing on it, it will cost you £19,160 as of mid 2019, but mine's got a few extras on it and with delivery and all that jazz, it will save you back a nice round £24,000. This new model is a good looking thing. The last one looked like a bug, but this one is sharper, cleaner, more grrr. I'm a bit obsessed with this paint color too, Tiaman Green, named after an island in Malaysia. I've been looking at it for six months and I still think it looks ace. It costs 575 pounds, but so do all the other colors apart from shell white. Most of the options are pretty muted apart from this, but if you want to go really out there, how about the Python yellow metallic, which is lurid to say the least. Overall, the interior is pretty impressive for a small car and things do look pretty fancy. The digital dash, which is standard, is a lovely thing. I just like how the space has been designed. The screen is angled towards you. There's some funky, swoopy, curvy bits. This metallic trim is really nice. And overall, friends and family have been really impressed with it as well. There is loads of adjustment in the seat and steering wheel. So even after a really long journey, I have been perfectly comfortable. I briefly mentioned the digital dash before, which is great. It's really easy to get your head around. You can change the views in all sorts of ways and it's totally customizable. This button here is completely customizable as well. You can use it to change things like voice guidance on the navigation, have that on or off and switch between radio and media. To use navigation at all though, you do have to have upgraded to the technology pack, which is not cheap at £1,650, as well as the sat nav, which does have a lot of functionality. You get a slightly bigger touchscreen and Audi's fancier virtual cockpit rather than the standard digital dash. You also get a 36 month subscription to Audi online connect services, which is a 4G hotspot in your car and a wireless charging pad, which I cannot use because I've got a Huawei phone. The A1 does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connectivity. So if you do have a decent amount of data and can use Google Maps on your phone, I'm not sure whether it would be worth upgrading to the technology pack. I'd rather have had the comfort and sound pack, which is £995. It gets you a fancier Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system, front and rear parking sensors, this one just has rear, and heated front seats. Three things I really like in a car bundled together in one pack, perfect. There are a few little storage areas about the cabin. There's a little cubby under the armrest, although ridiculously the armrest itself is a cost option. There's an all right size glove box, really decent sized door bins, both front and rear, which can fit a big bottle of water. And there's the space where the wireless charger is. You also get two cup holders, plus a bonus espresso cup holder, fancy. Friends who have been in the back have always been more than happy with the amount of head and legroom on offer. It is pretty spacious back here for a small car. Getting in and out is easy too because the wheel arches don't intrude into the door space. When there have been three people in the back though, after a couple of hours, short straw person in the middle has been a little bit uncomfortable and has required a sugary bribe or two to keep them happy. Boot space has always been enough for me. At 335 litres, there is more than enough room for two millennials who really can't pack lightly to go on a long weekend away together, and then some leftover space as well. If you fold the seats flat, the space goes up to 1,090 litres. It's pretty flat and you can throw things in really easily. It's petrol power only for the Audi A1, no diesels and no plans for any electric or hybrid versions either. This is the 30 TFSI, which is a one litre, three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine with 116 horsepower. For most people, this will be all the power you'll need. It's perky, it can get you everywhere easily and it's quiet as well. I've got the six speed manual gearbox, which is slick shifting and really nice and easy to use, I definitely stick with that over the automatic gearbox option. 
over my six months with this car, I've averaged a little over 50 mpg, which isn't half bad. It costs 45 pounds to fill up the tank, and with that you get about 440 miles if you include some motorway driving and don't splash it about everywhere. There are some other engine options available with this car, with more information on those on screen now. With the sport trim that this is, you get Audi's dynamic suspension setup. Although the trim is called Sport, it's actually the most relaxed suspension setup available. But that doesn't mean that you can't have fun in this car. I've been really impressed with how it drives. It's pretty quick, it's responsive, it's darty, and if you find yourself on a fun road with some good corners, it's got strong grip and hardly any body lean. The ride does have a bit of an edge to it, so you will feel some of those bumps and uneven surfaces out there. But it's not so bad that it'll have people complaining, even your friend in the middle seat. Around town it's great too, it's pretty small so it fits into most places easily, including the tiny, tiny roads around Cornwall. Visibility out the front is good, although the big rear pillar at the back can cause a few visibility issues when you're trying to pull out of a junction. There have been one or two things that have annoyed me during my time with the Audi A1. I'm all for safety systems when they work, but the lane departure warning on this car can be very frustrating. The system is meant to stop you from unintentionally drifting into another lane and gently steer you back in, but on country roads it gets it all wrong. Even when you're perfectly in a lane, the car decides you're not and it tugs you all around the road, which can be quite scary. The Audi Pre-Sense front with pedestrian and cyclist recognition, catchy, has also caught me out on a couple of occasions. It's a very sensitive thing and it has slammed the anchors on for me a couple of times when I've been perfectly aware of an upcoming traffic situation. Overall, I've loved my six months with the Audi A1. It's been pretty perky and practical, and I'm really going to miss that pop of teal and green in the car park. <laughs>